Greetings, friends. I wanted to come on and record a short video today. I know that we're all seeing more of these types of videos than probably at any other time that we have ever experienced in our lives. And it's been on my heart to just share a little bit of what God's been placing on my heart with all of you who have been a part of our prayer and financial team. I want to read, I want to begin by reading just a couple of scriptures as an encouragement to us in the midst of what is unfolding in the nations with the coronavirus. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, this is Jesus speaking, I believe he's speaking you know, to our hearts. He says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 14, 28 through 33. This is a visual that the Lord's been uh, consistently bringing to my mind where Peter stepped out of the boat onto the water in the midst of the storm. And there was a time he was standing, he was walking on water with Jesus as his eyes were fixed on Jesus. But the moment he took his eyes off of Jesus and started looking at the storm that was happening around him, he began to sink down. And I see that happening with many people right now. Uh, you know, when, when our eyes are on the Lord, we're, we can be as though we're walking on water. We're above the circumstances that are going on around us. We're above the continuous stream of news reports that are trying to pull our attention away uh, from the Lord to uh, the the difficulties happening around us. And, and then if, if we allow that to happen, we begin to sink down. Our faith begins to sink down. Our hope, our joy, our peace begin to sink down. And then we're in a position where instead of being able to help others, uh, we're actually needing to cry out to God to help us. So let me just read that. This is in Matthew chapter 14, beginning in verse 28. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to come, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And Jesus got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened and began to sink. Seeing the wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped, and those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are certainly God's son. So that, that's one encouragement that I have both for myself and for each of us, that we don't allow this continuous stream of news to cause us to, like Peter did, take his eyes off the Lord. And we're looking at, you know, we're hearing the latest of, of people who are uh, contracting the, the virus or getting sick or dying and uh, allow that to somehow in the midst of the storm, take our eyes off of Jesus to the degree that we begin to sink down into a hopelessness or a fear. Uh, just really encourage us to take this season as a, uh, an opportunity to uh, go deeper in our intimacy with the Lord. I know that that's what he's placed on my heart for myself and for our family, that this is really a season that he is allowing the nations to slow down, to stop even, in order to seek his face. And then Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 7. <coughs> Don't worry, can't catch anything from that cough. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 7. Who should not fear you, king of the nations? This is your due. Among all the wise leaders of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is no one like you. So uh, this is the encouragement that the Lord placed on my heart. Uh, one is what I just shared, that visual of Peter out on the water and the winds and the waves crashing around him. Uh, I'm sure in that moment it was difficult to not look at those things. Uh, I'm sure in that moment, it seemed almost an impossibility to like, you know, Jesus said, you have little faith, but 
uh, you know, those winds, that wind and those waves were crashing right around him and he's like on water and he's going, you know, how could I have not looked at those things? Uh, but there was a, a better way. There was actually a way in that moment, in spite of all the things around him, that he could have kept his eyes on Jesus. He could have remained above the, the waves. He could have not been distracted by the wind. And he could have maintained his faith in that moment. Uh, and how do we maintain our faith other than to keep our eyes on the Lord through reading the Word of God, through, and, you know, hopefully more than just a little bit. But we have, many of us have more time in this season where so many things on our schedules or our calendars have been shut down. We have the time right now to be in the Word of God. We have the time right now to pray. We've always said, you know, oh, I wish I'd could read the word more. I wish I could pray more. I wish I wasn't so busy and had this and that, uh, that are distracting me or preventing me from doing those things. Well, right now, none of us have those excuses. Uh, even us in a home with five children, we, we have no excuse for not seeking the Lord right now. Uh, this is an opportunity in the midst of a crisis to do some of the things that we've always known that we should more time in the Word of God, more time in prayer. If you're in a marriage or a family situation, what an opportunity right now to spend time in worship, in prayer, and in the Word of God in our marriages, in our families, and, and really allow it to be a time, I believe for many, I believe the Lord intends it to be a time of rebuilding that intimacy with Him and with each other. And let's not miss this opportunity. I want to uh, close with a story that has come to my mind a number of different times. Some of you may remember I served for about six years with a Ugandan-based ministry. <coughs> and one of the things that they saw happen in Uganda, I'll just share a little of their story. Their background was they had a, is, there was a dictator, Idi Amin was in charge of the nation. He was persecuting the church. He was arresting the pastors. This was a crisis. This was winds and waves and a, and a great storm. There was a point that they started shutting down all of the church buildings. You could not even meet. This was not a virus stopping the churches. This was a dictator stopping the churches. And it wasn't for a couple of weeks. It was over a period of years that he was trying to shut down anything having to do with Jesus in the country. That was a crisis. And in the midst of the crisis, the body of Christ came together, they united, they began to pray together. They say it got so bad at one point that the only safe place to pray was in the jungles at night. You would go into the jungles at night and uh, meet up with other believers. Didn't matter what denomination they were coming from, uh, conservative, uh, charismatic, or Pentecostal, it didn't matter. It was like, are you praying to Jesus? So am I. Let's do it together. And in that crisis, they united in prayer, and God answered those prayers, removed the Idi Amin from power, and, and the church began to rejoice. The church began to say, God's answered our prayers. But those who lived through this time told me when I was, when I was there, and we were producing a documentary on this, that they basically went right back to sleep in their prayer lives. The moment the crisis was removed, the moment this man was removed from power and there was some freedom that came back, uh, they, they went back to sleep in their prayer life. And then coming out of that, what happened was an even worse dictator came into power. This is a, a gentleman that most people haven't heard of. His name was Milton Abote. And so he came in after Idi Amin and the people were first rejoicing, thinking we've got freedom. But this, over time, this man began to implement policies that were even worse than Idi Amin's. And in fact, he began to massacre entire villages and uh, was more brutal than Idi Amin was. So again, as the persecution rose, as the churches were being shut down, as the pastors were being tortured and killed, and church members prevented from meeting together, the church began to pray. They got desperate for the Lord. In the midst of the crisis, they cried out to him like Peter, going, Lord, save us. And again, the Lord answered. 
remove that dictator from power and another man came into power who's actually the man who's still in power now and there was freedom of worship was restored churches began to flourish people were coming to the lord but again listen to the the story of what happened those who were there say we fell asleep again they didn't learn a lesson first crisis came they got desperate they prayed they cried out to the lord and there was an answer but they stopped praying same thing happened again and this time what came into the nation it was an unseen enemy it was hiv aids this was unknown people didn't even understand what was happening why were people getting sick and dying they didn't they didn't understand what was happening in the country and so the church had gone to sleep again in prayer and it took it got to the point where the government called a meeting of all the pastors and they basically said we as your government have no solution for this crisis uh, we we've talked to the world health organization they've got no solution jesus is our only hope your jesus is our only hope and the pastors began to enter into a season of extended fasting and prayer and of seeking the Lord for this situation. Again, another crisis had come. But this time, as they were praying, what the, the Lord impressed on their hearts was what I believe is the message that's on my heart to share with you. The Lord said to them, stop focusing on your problems, but focus on my purposes. If you will focus on my purposes, I will take care of all of your problems. So this time around, instead of just focusing on the AIDS, they began to focus on the purposes of God. And the purposes that God put in front of them was, one, rebuild your own personal intimacy with me. Just between you and the Lord, began to rebuild that. As you begin to rebuild your personal intimacy with me, then you will be in a position to rebuild the intimacy that should have been there in your marriage and in your family life. As you're, as you're uh, walking in love with the Lord, first love with God, he's filling your own heart up with the love, the grace, the patience and compassion you need to, to live life well in your marriage and in your family. And then as you then, then the Lord led them, establish the word of God, worship and prayer in every home in the country. So every Christian home began to have times in the word of God, worship and prayer on a daily and regular basis. As they began to do that, the family units began to be restored. Marriages that were on the brink of divorce uh, were healed. Prodigal sons and daughters re began to return to the Lord. And then out of that situation, then the, the church was strengthened and they were able to then go into the government, into the businesses, into the schools, and into really every fabric of society and bring the gospel, but not just with words, but with authority, with lives that were really living it out. And that I believe is the call of the hour for each of us in this season of lockdown or shelter in place that we would instead of focusing on the problem and there are multiple problems going on right now from people getting sick and dying to people losing their jobs to the uncertainty of what is this going to look like in the upcoming weeks months uh, or beyond um, instead of us focusing on all of that right now let us focus on the purposes of god let us Focus on seeking to go deeper into intimacy with him right now in our lives and in our homes. And then out of focusing on his purposes, I believe we will watch him do great and mighty things in the coming days as we come out of this crisis. Our, our troubles are always going to be there in different ways. But if we'll focus on his purposes, then we always have direction no matter what's going on around us, whether things are going well and things are easy and life's just moving forward in a, in a normal way, or things are happening the way they are right now, we can always know, well, my direction is to focus on the purposes of God. He will then take care of everything else. And I believe that Jesus said that. I'm going to kind of close out in reading out of Matthew chapter 6. I believe this is 
kind of some of the heart of what Jesus was talking about. This is beginning in uh, verse 25, Matthew chapter 6. Therefore I tell you, do not be, this is Jesus speaking, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Dropping down to verse 31, same chapter. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Amen. Um, I want to just, as I conclude, encourage us to really put this into practice. I know we're all getting a lot of messages right now. Uh, we're getting messages from the media, <coughs> from the news. They're telling us, they're really trying to tell us what we should be focused on in one story after the next. They're trying to go, no, you have to look at this. You can't be a human being and have air and breath in your body and not focus on what we're trying to put in front of you right now. Uh, but the truth is we can hit that power off button and we can open this up and we can get the, the more true and proper perspective as we fix our eyes on the Lord and as we really take time during this season to press into him, to let the word of God wash over our hearts and our minds, I would encourage at least one, two, three, or more chapters of the Bible every day. Uh, what if we took this season of shelter in place or of, of lockdown uh, five, ten chapters a day. What would that begin to do? How would our perspective begin to shift? And then as we're reading the Word of God, allowing that to then take us into a place of prayer where we're not just praying out of a place of fear or out of the, the latest wind and the waves, but we're praying the purposes of God, both for our own lives, in our families, and then beyond as He leads us to pray, maybe for, for our city, for our nation, or even to the nations. And I want to close out by uh, giving you two quick things here. Uh, one thing is we've set up a web page. I'm going to see if I can bring that up on the screen. Uh, we've set up a web page at this time. Yeah, here it is. Um, you see the visual picture there that I was mentioning of Jesus and the wind and the waves and speaking to the storm to be still and how it had no choice but to listen to him. And uh, what we've done is we've set up a web page here where we are giving away pretty much all of the discipleship resources that we use. If you've been following our newsletters for any length of time, you know that one element of the ministry we have is a discipleship ministry where we have uh, resources that train people in personal intimacy with the Lord, that train people in their marriages and their family intimacy with the Lord and then how to make a difference for Christ wherever they live, work, and play. That's kind of the, the focus of the resources we have and the trainings that we do in different nations. And so here is, this is a booklet here, Global Call to a Spirit-Empowered Life. It's a 28-page booklet. We have it in English and Spanish, and it's available free of charge. The, I'm going to give you the website address, and I'll also hopefully include that as a link uh, on this YouTube video. <coughs> the, the link is dninternational.org backslash intimacy with God. And if you go to that webpage, dninternational.org backslash intimacy with God, you will see this whole list of resources. So we have this booklet. That's a good sort of a jump start in going, you know, hey, I haven't really been walking out a lifestyle of intimacy with the Lord, uh, what's something I could begin to do that could help me 
take a step in that direction. That booklet would be a perfect starting point. It's very short and it's visual and hopefully uh, will be an encouragement to you. It, we have it again in English and in Spanish. Then uh, we also have, I've put up the full book, Journey into the Spirit Empowered Life, and that's also in English and Spanish. And uh, that's a very complete book. It's something that you can do as an individual in your marriage, in your family, or in a small group setting. And we're making it available free of charge. Uh, we also have pulled a chapter out of that book on marriage and family. We have a short two-page vision document. What could it look like for my marriage and my family to take time in the Word of God, prayer, and worship together? Uh, so there's a, a short two-page document in English and Spanish, and then a full, uh, this is a full booklet also on that same topic. And we have a couple of videos. This is a friend of mine, Chris Leeper, who out in San Diego, he um, he, his family of eight children does a family altar. And so he just shot some video of that and gives a, a visual example of what that's looked like in their home. So uh, I would encourage you to go through some of these resources and see, see if God might use them as an encouragement to you at this time. <laughs> um, and then I also did a teaching on the marriage and family. And then we have a whole series of training videos here as well. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention is uh, we've started using Zoom technology for um, our, this global network that we've mentioned. And we have a call, we have, we're gonna do over the next several weeks, we're gonna have a couple of calls on Zoom. And normally we limit those calls to those who are a part of leading these different ministries that we're working with. Uh, but the Lord's putting it on my heart to open that call up to all of you, anyone who has a, a heart to be a part of this time of prayer. Uh, so for the next two weeks, it's going to be April 1st. It will be the, the first opportunity. It's Wednesday. It'll be at 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific depending on where you are, central time would be at noon. Um, but I'm going to be sending that link out with this email. And if you're led to join us, uh, we'd love to have you. There is going to be a limit on the call of 100 people. I don't know if we'll get anywhere near that. Uh, we've had as many as 30, some in the past, but I've never opened it up like this. So if you're led to join us, uh, I would recommend getting on the call a little bit early. Uh, before 1 p.m. Eastern this Wednesday, April 1st. Uh, I hope that you're encouraged by some of what I shared here. I'm going to just close in a time of prayer. Father, I thank you for every man, woman, and child who has an opportunity to uh, hear this message today. It's a message of encouraging us to take our eyes off the wind and the storms that are going around us and to fix our eyes on you, Jesus. Uh, when Peter took his eyes off of you and began to sink, you said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And you also spoke to us, Who of you by worrying can add even a single moment, even a, a single breath, a single second to your life? So worry is completely unproductive. And focusing on wind and rain and storms is completely unproductive. It does not help us to rise up and to be the men and women that you have created us to be. So Father, help us to turn off some of the noise that we have been looking at or listening to, and help us to tune in to you at this time. Really help us to make those practical decisions, those real world adjustments to actually implement this, not just hear about it, but to actually Take time in your word. Even right now, as we stop this video, help us to take time in your word right now or at some point today that we wouldn't put this off any longer, but we would take time in your word today. Take time in prayer today. Take time listening to worship music that draws our heart to focus in on you. And help us, Lord, to not be focused in on these distractions, but to instead focus in on you. And in that way, Lord, I believe you to cause us to become the answer to the problems that our world is facing. Uh, the answer is not just some vague 
thing, something out there. We are the solution. We are the solution. You've placed your life inside of us. And we are your plan A, and there is no plan B to the problems of the nations. We, your church, your, those who are called by the name of Jesus Christ, we are your solution. And so, Father, I pray that at this time we would be looking for opportunities to be a light for you. It can be in person. It can be as we're, if we're walking through our neighborhood, even from a distance. We can be praying. We can be blessing people, whether it's through online that we have an opportunity to make a difference in the lives of others around us, or by making a phone call to a family member or a loved one, uh, that we, during this season, it, this is our opportunity to shine. This is our opportunity to, to show there is a difference in you, Jesus. There, there, you make a real world difference in the lives of those who are following you. I thank you for those who are watching us. I pray your blessing on them and help them to draw near to you during this time. Help them to make the decisions to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. Pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen. Blessings to each of you, and I look forward to continuing to stay in touch during this time. If there's any way that our family could be in prayer for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Send us an email. Give us a call. God bless you. Bye.